What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I'm going to be doing a special upload. I've, I've been wanting to do this for a while. I've kind of been hinting at it. A lot of you have probably seen some of these items listed in the description uh, of some of my videos. Um, you know, I'm, I'm well aware of uh, the effect that this world has on newcomers. You know, we've all um, gone to Instagram and seen pictures like this. Ooh, wow, so many shiny, cool, expensive objects. And I love all of this stuff. I love EDC stuff like this. Sometimes this stuff tends to be um, really expensive. And when I say really expensive, I mean really expensive. Now, um, if you've been around for a while, you know, you've been a part of this world for a while, um, maybe you have evolved uh, to the point where you, uh, you, you find regular justifications to spend money on this stuff, you're okay with it, that's fine. To a newcomer, somebody who's like, hey, listen, I, I've been carrying this, um, this $20 knife for a while and uh, I've found uh, that, uh, you know, there's, there's all this cool stuff out there. You know, I discovered uh, the knife community on Instagram or on the forums or I started watching your channel. You're showing all this stuff that you're recommending or these, these other channels are showing all this stuff. But I'm like, holy crap, this stuff is so expensive. But I want to be a part of it. I've always tried to cater to the new people. You know, this, this knife world, this EDC world is expanding and that's good. That's good for me. That's good for you. But it's confusing to new people and they're constantly being told by me and their peers like, spend more money on this stuff. You need to spend. You don't have to. In fact, I would honestly tell people, hey, let's ease into it. You should ease into it. Some of this stuff is interesting, but it's not always 100% necessary for every person. Do I believe every single person should carry a folding knife that falls within the legal limitations of their area? Yes, I do. Are there other items that can be helpful? Sure, but it, depend it depends on the individual. Now, like I said, if you're on Instagram and you're like, I want a pry bar, um, it's pretty easy to find a $200, $300, $400 dollar pry bar. That's cool, but you don't need to spend that much on it. That's kind of something that you choose to evolve into down the road. So the idea with this is I'm going to present some um, some items in what I'm going to call my EDC starter kit. Now, there are so many other choices out there besides the items I'm going to show today. I'm showing items that I have purchased for myself recently, not items that were given to me um, by uh, the manufacturers. No, I actually purchased these items because they looked interesting to me. I purchased a, actually a lot of stuff you're not seeing here, and I've been carrying a lot of it, and I've, I've, I've kept the things that I uh, have actually enjoyed carrying that I actually think that I can recommend to people. The best part about this is all of this stuff, each individual item is under $50, some of it well under $50. So if you're getting into this world and you feel this this urge to like, you know, build this EDC pack of, of stuff that you carry around with you, you know, how much of it you want to carry is entirely up to you or whether or not you even choose the items I'm recommending is entirely up to you. But I want to give people some options, you know. So if you've been in this world for a long time, you know, then a lot of this stuff is not going to be, um, you know, stuff that you're really interested in. But, you know, possibly there's a couple of items you're not aware of here. So without further ado, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I'm going to talk about uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of these things. They'll all have links in the description. You feel free. So there's a lot of different um, pry bars out there. What's the what's the point of carrying around a little EDC pry bar? Well, first and foremost, you're going to save the tip of your blade. Everybody's dad or uncle takes a pocket knife and goes and sticks it in her and uses it as a screwdriver. That's especially cringy on a knife like the Victorinox Cadet here because it actually has a flathead uh, screwdriver slash pry bar on it, right? But it's not always ideal for every situation. I think it's a good idea to carry a dedicated small yet strong uh, EDC pry bar. I found um, this to be my absolutely favorite. This is literally my favorite EDC pry bar of all time. You'll notice another theme with a lot of the stuff is that it can it's small enough to be carried on a keychain, which is something I've found that I enjoy. We'll talk about here that here in a sec. Uh, this is the uh, Kershaw PT1. Um, this is a, a Chinese-made um, item from Kershaw's uh, Kershaw's line. Um, it's a small, uh, flat sort of scraper pry bar slash bottle opener slash mini pry bar slash flathead screwdriver back here that's just thick enough and just robust enough to be plenty strong. Um, I've used this a little bit, scraped some tape off of my desk. Uh, um, I've actually used the edge to open a box, um, but uh, this is the, uh, the type of item that's really going to save your blade and your edge. And it's also handy having the flathead screwdriver back there. Is it the most ideal tool for every situation that might call on it? 
No, but having it on your person or on your keys is certainly something that I think would benefit a lot of people and you're really, really gonna enjoy it. Um, the downside to it is, I wonder if I can get my scale in here in a way that's um, going to not sort of mess up the flow that I've got going here. Let me try and turn this on real quick so you can see. It's a little bit chunky, a little bit. It weighs about an ounce. If you're gonna be carrying it in your pocket, no big deal. If it's gonna be hanging off your keychain with a bunch of other stuff, which like I said, we're gonna be talking about here, it might might not be something that's absolutely ideal to you. So moving on here, I do have some options for some more lightweight stuff. I can move that out of the way. These are little widgie pry bars. Um, this is the one that's actually connected to my keychain currently. Um, it absolutely does get used. Now that's a little pry bar, but it's also a little nail puller. Um, you're not gonna have the bottle opener feature on this guy, um, but the weight on this thing is coming in at nothing. A quarter of an ounce. Uh, even on the bigger guy that's attached to a um, suspension clip, titanium suspension clip, we're looking at three quarters of an ounce, so you're still under there. Um, these are great options, you know, whether you want something bigger or smaller. Um, these are gonna be great ultra lightweight options that are just straightforward, utilitarian. Um, there's no pomp or frill. They're gonna do exactly what they're designed to do and you can just go about your day. Now. For a lot of people, they like to carry individual items. If you're not the type of person to carry a whole lot of different types of things, and you're like, I just want a knife and I want a pry bar. Um, there's a good reason to um, just attach something like this to your keys because it's really not gonna weigh it down all that much. My keys are um, pretty heavy and bulky and there's stuff all over them. My logic towards this is I used to carry a bunch of these um, EDC items individually but I kept, they kept going through the wash, right? This guy with the suspension clip, I carried it like this for a while, I did a video on it, but it kept going through the wash. So for me, my answer to that is to put everything on my keys. Why, you know, they're a little bulky in my pocket and they do weigh quite a bit with everything on it. But you know, when I get to work, they get thrown in my desk. They're not in my pocket, but they're definitely gonna go with me if I leave. They're gonna be with me in my car, if I go shopping or whatever, wherever I am, they're gonna be with me and they're just my keys. I found that to be more convenient than having to remember all of the little individual items that are sticking out of my pocket so that I don't wash them at the end of the day. But how you carry these items is entirely up to you and whether or not you carry all or a few or just one of these things is entirely up to you, which is why I've included this um, little suspension clip on the list. Now you can find these things super cheap online, but I'm honestly gonna recommend you spend a little bit more money. I'm gonna try and link this one exactly. This is a titanium suspension clip that I think ran me about 10 bucks. Could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less. Um, but uh, that thing's a lot stronger than the little $2 ones that you find on eBay. And I, I, I've read too much about those things breaking. That suspension clip and that little ring could literally be added to any one of these items and you could carry them individually. But if you don't wanna do that, you can just attach any of these to your keychain and kind of do it how I like to do it. So I just wanted to kind of point that out there. I think the uh, titanium suspension clip is an absolute must have um, for um, your, your EDC needs. Um, this little guy is the Spyderco bug. This is well known. Uh, this was given to me by Chris Gonzalez, a really generous viewer who helps out with content on this channel. I didn't think that I would really use this all that much, but um, this actually, somebody made a post about um, what's your dedicated gym knife. And I was like, I don't take a knife to the gym. And then I thought, wait a second, yes I do. I, I technically carry the bug to the gym because it's on my keys. I have used this thing so many times in situations where I'm not, it's not often, but there are some situations where I'm not carrying a knife and I always have one on me, um, no matter what, with this little tiny bug. Now, this isn't obviously a, a tactical knife or a hard use knife, but is it a knife that will conveniently open a package in a situation where you have nothing else on you? Yes, and it's actually pretty well made. It's stayed sharp. All I ever use it for is opening packages and letters. It's very inexpensive. Um, it's probably more than some people might guess. I wanna say they're around $15, but I love that thing. I use it so much more than I ever thought I would. And I love that it's on my keychain. It weighs nothing, a little stainless steel thing. And check this out. It's remained centered this whole time with minimal blade play. I'm not really concerned with that, <laughs> given what it is. A little slip joint knife, I think it's excellent. Definitely can recommend that item. Next up, this is my absolute favorite flashlight that I have ever carried. Now you guys know I'm a big fan of the E-Tac D3C. This is about a $75 flashlight and what I've got in there right now is a USB rechargeable battery. I love this thing. Titanium shell, uh, nice, uh, you know, lightweight, you know, it's not super thick, it's got a good pocket clip, that's great. 
it's still an extra item that I gotta carry around. And at the end of the day, honestly, it's a little bit bulky for me. I'd rather just have a little tiny thing that is um, uh, you know, connected to my keys. I just realized I wanted to put a couple other items out here for some size comparison so you guys kinda know what a lot of this stuff is comparable to. So there's a quarter, a penny, and a double A AA battery. Uh, this is the Rovivon Aurora A3 aluminum flashlight. This little guy is just my very favorite. This thing weighs nothing, and a lot of people are aware of this thing, um, but uh, this little guy ha has been on my keys for a while now. It's capable of producing light up to 550 lumens. It's got five different modes, one, two, three, strobe, and a super low setting, and then you hold the button down to turn it off. Um, the best thing about this guy is that it is um, mini US or micro USB um, rechargeable. So it has a little port right there. Um, it is water resistant and uh, comes in a lot of different flavors. They've got a ton of different models. I mean, I'll link this one down there um, as well as its, um, its uh, uh, more expensive brother, the titanium one. These run about 30 bucks in this configuration. You can get them in this gunmetal finish. You can get them in a red finish. I use this thing all the time. I love having an EDC flashlight on me, but I just don't like carrying this one. Excuse me, somebody's trying to call me. I don't like carrying this one every single day. You know, only certain situations, maybe camping or messing around in my backyard or whatever at night. But this guy is so helpful and it's so lightweight. It's so easy to carry on your keys or if you want to attach a little, you know, suspension clip to it, it's just the best thing ever. I cannot recommend that little guy enough. There are lots of good reviews on this thing online. Um, it's just, it's truly incredible. It's not something that you can take apart, um, but uh, I mean, it's also not something that's going to fall off of your keychain. I would definitely recommend um, this as a dedicated keychain flashlight, especially at that power. There are a lot of really expensive flashlights that are capable of 550 lumens that are much bigger and bulkier than that and cost a lot more money. So that thing is an absolute beast. Um, next up, this is the Thai EDC um, titanium waterproof stash. Um, I found uh, that uh, my use for this was allergy medication. I live in Kansas and I'm in my early 30s. Um, about the time that I hit 28, I realized um, I have uh, allergies that actually affect me, um, you know, in certain seasons here. You know, we have pretty extreme seasons and it just drove me crazy. I had a runny nose and I'd have headaches. And um, so being able to carry some allergy medication uh, with me that's not in some big bulky container or not like just r rattling around in my pocket is pretty nice. Um, you know, some people might use this for um, something a lot more serious like heart medication, you know, what, what have you, you know, an emergency waterproof uh, container. This is awesome. It's got an O-ring on it. It's very durable. Well, I'll tell you this. Once this little guy is screwed down, it there is no way that it's going to come unscrewed. Getting these last couple of turns right here absolutely seals this thing. Um, it is it is very, very waterproof. You can see it's been banging around on my keys, some scratches, but it's very well made. It's titanium. It's ultra lightweight. It literally doesn't weigh anything. Um, they, uh, they're available for, I want to say, about 15 ish dollars. There's a couple different sizes. I'll put them down there in the description. And there's a lot. Any of these links that you click on, you can click on them and it's going to bring you a whole mess of other EDC items that are somewhat related. So this is just a suggestion, but if you, if you use my portal, you go through there to take a look at this and you decide you don't want this specific item, there's a lot, a lot of other stuff to look at. Love that guy. Carry it every single day. Really, really like it. Again, about the size of a uh, AA battery there. Next up, we have the True Utility Stainless Telescoping Pen. Now, that this a lot of you guys are going to remember, um, Nick Shabazz actually reviewed this guy. Um, if you're like me, uh, the thing that you lose more often than not, like in, in my line of work, I, I need a pen with me all the time. All the time. And uh, I lose my pens all the time. So I decided, you know, I'm going to need a dedicated EDC pen. Um, the more expensive it is, you know, I, like Jeff gave me a really nice, um, nice uh, copper pen. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm so worried about losing it, you know, pinning it to my shirt. Um, and I just, I forget about things and it'll go through the wash. Um, and uh, it's just, it's, it's not something that I want to carry for risk of losing it. So the answer is a really inexpensive thing that writes that you can just attach to your keychain. This thing is ultra lightweight. It's telescoping, so it's not, while it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, it is gonna write really, really well. This is literally less than $10, and you can see kind of how it works here. It just sort of scrunches together, and then it clips right into here. Now, the downside is, is that it can, 
just be pulled out. So with enough force in the right situation, there is a chance that you might lose this. It also takes these proprietary um, refills, you know, but in that video that was like two years old, Nick was like, ah, you know, it's kind of, it's one of those things where I'm not 100% sure that the refills are always going to be available. Well, it, right now in 2019, it's very easy to purchase this guy or 10 of them and a bajillion refills, you know, so yeah, they're proprietary, they're specific, but they're very, very available and they're very, very inexpensive. Um, this is definitely something that I can recommend. Like I said, it's not going to be the most comfortable thing in the world, but it'll definitely write and it'll definitely make your day easier. If you want something a little bit more robust and something that's definitely not going to accidentally disengage or, or um, you know, uh, pull itself off of your keychain so that you lose it, um, this is the CyberDyer Glass Breaker Pen um, that uh, it, it essentially just unscrews. Now this guy is a lot more bulky. I'm going to go ahead and weigh it real quick. That's the downside to this. Move this stuff over and give you guys a weight. We'll also weigh some of these other items that I forgot to weigh. There's the Rovi Vaughn uh, flashlight coming in at about half an ounce. Um, there's the Thai EDC um, stash. Can we just put it like this? Coming in at 0.63. Um, here's the True Utility Pan coming in, a little over a quarter of an ounce. And then this guy, which is much heavier, coming in at 1.41 ounces. Now that's definitely gonna be a deal breaker um, for a lot of people right there. And I'll tell you, you know, if you're the type of person who's gonna carry this stuff like on your keychain, you're gonna be thinking, wow, that's way too heavy to carry on a keychain. But for me, I've been carrying this thing on my keychain and I found, you know, I actually don't mind it. I mean, it is definitely the heaviest thing on my keys, but it's not a deal breaker for me. And um, I, I kind of like knowing that it's not gonna detach. I don't necessarily need a tungsten glass breaker, but there's one on there. How does this work? Well, there's a seam on there that you can just barely see. I'll turn it right there, there we go. I love the quality of this thing, you know? Um, I, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, um, but it does write and it, it does make things convenient. If you do decide to just detach this completely um, from your keychain, you can turn it over and make the entire thing a little bit longer and you can write with it like a regular pen. Um, this thing absolutely seals up perfectly, um, comes together, it feels very, very durable. And again, you can get it for the exact same price as this. It does have its own proprietary little refill things, um, but you can buy a whole pack of these for like 10 bucks. Maybe that's a little more expensive than standard refills. It doesn't bother me. Um, I, I've used that thing so many times since I bought it. It's very durable. It's gonna bang into things. You take your keys and you go up to your vehicle, it's gonna probably bang into your vehicle a little bit. So if you don't wanna carry it like that, again, you can use a suspension clip. Um, but for me, it, it works really well on a keychain. But like I said, for those of you who don't like it, there's another much more lightweight option right next to it. Next up, a lot of you guys know about this. This is a tile. What is it? Well, it's a little um, electronic device that you can attach to your keychain or any EDC item that you want via lanyard or key ring loop. Um, and uh, basically it syncs up with your phone uh, via Bluetooth. And if you lose it or it's in a couch somewhere and you're in your vehicle or under a seat or you just can't find it, you can send a signal from your phone to the tile and it emits a little noise. Let's see if I can... Exactly, just like that. Now that's an older model, but I can tell you, I have managed to find my keys again after losing them so many times by um, sending the signal and getting it to emit that little chime. Um, if you do have expensive items attached to your keys or the thing that it's attached to is very expensive, it can mean the difference between um, finding it and losing it forever. So I think that's awesome. You can, you can find those things right now for I think like 15 to $20. I think it's well worth it, especially if you're the type of person who's like, Listen, Complex, I'm not interested in any of this cheaper stuff, but I've got some really expensive items that I might want to attach that to. There you go. 15 bucks or so, whatever that cost can really save um, some of your EDC items. Next up, I want to talk about um, some of the items that I use to maintain my knives and break them down. So listen, there's no short supply out there of really expensive drivers and really expensive bit sets, but um, the one consistency you guys are going to hear all the time is that we are... Sorry, the tile's still making noise. Um, the Wea uh, stuff it really t tends to be um, very, uh, you know, fit really well and uh, do a really, really good job. Um, this is a Wea bit selector. It's um, they're quarter inch bits. It's got uh, torque sizes anywhere from this little itty bitty T5 all the way up to this massive, um, excuse me, uh, T30. Now. Out of all my knives and everything that I've shown on this channel, um, nothing that has required torques 
um, has been outside of these ranges. So this thing has been absolutely indispensable. Um, it's been awesome. It comes with a little magnetic um, uh, extender. And this, um, this, this stubby driver that I purchased is also inexpensive. This thing runs, I think, pretty consistently between $10 and $20. Well worth it. This little guy runs consistently between $5 and $10 and it's gonna sync up with the extender and any of the bits. It's so easy to use. I use this thing all the time and you know, I used to use, or for a lot of uh, stuff, I actually still do use my little hinderer one. But the problem with this guy, even though it is magnetic um, and does accept a lot of the same bits, it's, I'm, I'm having to pinch it. So this, I can't get as much torque on in times where I'm really trying, you know, or really trying to uh, work that uh, Loctite screw out of, of its position. This guy's a lot easier to use. It's also a lot easier to um, keep control over because of the material here. It's also way less expensive. This is just awesome. Like between that driver and this thing, I mean, you, there's really not a lot more you're gonna need in a basic EDC setup or a basic um, you know, maintenance setup. Um, these two items are just awesome and I use them all the time. The little uh, carry pouch is, or the little carry case is, has worked well. It kind of, you know, there's a little click right there, sort of click shut. Um, that was actually recommended to be my um, uh, one. I, I found it on one of Nick Shabazz's videos, that little bit selector. There's a bunch of them. If you don't like that one, like I said, if you follow the link, you're gonna find a whole bunch of other things. Same with the little driver. There's a million drivers out there, but there's all of a sudden this market for like custom drivers that cost a lot of money. That's great, but you're not getting any additional benefit. You know, same a lot of times with knives. Um, you can spend as much money as you want, but at, at some point, you know, there's just, you know, you're paying for more than just utility, which is fine. I talk about that a lot. Next up, I've got three knives here that many of you um, have seen so many times on my channel, but they are so recommendable for so many people. And I tried to pick three different ones. Um, the obvious one being the Ontario Rat. Um, and also, I don't have one here today, but the Ontario Rat too. These knives in D2 steel run about 40 bucks or 38 bucks if you go with the smaller one. Fully flat ground blade, um, just nice and thin behind the edge, an absolute workhorse. The thumb studs are in the right place. You know, it's got some uh, nylon scales that are plenty durable. I've really beat the crap out of this guy. Um, it's got the uh, phosphor bronze washers on the inside, so you don't really have to worry about cleaning out too much. Open body construction, pillar construction, po pocket clip is in the right place. It's a liner lock. Just durable and straightforward. That's an EDC knife that I can recommend to everybody. If you want the bigger guy, go with the bigger guy. If you want the smaller guy, go with the Rat 2. I'll link both of them. They also come in OS 8 for less money. Um, I prefer D2, but it's whatever. You know, if you want to spend a little bit less money, you can go with the OS 8 version. Absolutely recommendable. Next up, a slip joint, my dedicated backup knife. Um, in my opinion, the very best Victorinox that exists. This is the Victorinox Cadet Allox Edition that comes with, if I can get this open here, I have really used this guy and it has gone through the wash many times um, for not being connected to anything else. The blade, the can opener with the small flat head, uh, it's got the file slash poker, leather punch, whatever you wanna call that, then the can opener slash larger flat head slash pry bar. This thing is awesome. It's made out of aluminum. The Allox version has these sort of frag textured scales on there. Um, hardly weighs anything and it's just like infinitely, infinitely useful. Um, this is the knife that I always refer to as my backup folding knife that um, is basically sitting there to use to save whatever really nice knife I'm carrying because I'm being a snob that day or whatever, you know. Um, and it's also the knife that I hand to people. You can see there it weighs nothing. It weighs 1.66 uh, ounces. Um, it's also the knife that I hand to people when I don't want them using, you know, somebody who's not a knife person. I don't want to hand them a $200 frame lock. I just don't, right? If it's my dad or my uncle, he's going to try and, you know, pry a, uh, the cover plate off of a socket, a light socket or something, you know. Uh, or a plug socket or whatever you want to call that, or he's going to try to screw something in or he's going to, you know, I don't want him doing that. Um, so that's the knife that I uh, hand over. That's about a $30 knife, um, something that I consider uh, more disposable than a lot of other knives. And then last up, the Cold Steel Tough Light. For those of you who want the closer to the compactness of a smaller knife like that, but you want a lot more of the power and durability of a larger knife like the Rat, uh, the Cold Steel Tough Light is about as beastly as it gets for about 20 to $25. This short, stubby little Warncliffe blade, most ergonomic thing, I mean, I use this all the time. This is one of those knives that I use when I go outside with no, you know, no feeling of, oh, I don't wanna get it all dirty or whatever. Nope. This thing has opened up bags of concrete, dirt, 
dog food. It's dug into stuff. It's it's pride. I mean, this thing is literally use, utilizing the triad lock. Comes in a ton of different colors, by the way. Red, black, blue, green, yellow, whatever. Um, it's got uh, positions for left or right-handed carry, and it is fully ambidextrous, so it is going to fit the needs of left-handed people as well. Um, still no blade play on this guy. Up, down, left, or right. This is utilizing OS 8 steel, right? Doesn't come in D2 as of right now. I wish that it did. Uh, maybe in the future, um, but I'll say it is super easy to resharpen, and I've gotten so much use out of this guy. Nice lanyard hole there, and it's still centered, so that's great. I love this thing. I can absolutely recommend it to people. The last thing I'm going to uh, recommend to you guys is some type of lubrication. I have been using Break Free CLP forever. Now, this stuff is a little bit gunky, and admittedly, there's better stuff out there. I've had this same bottle, literally this same bottle, for eight years eight years one drop of this on the blade you can rub it all over the blade um, it has kept the rust off of this guy that's how i clean the blade on this guy or keep it from um, rusting since it is not a true stainless d2 steel um, you can also use it on your washers or your bearings though when you use it on bearings just keep in mind it's going to gunk up on bearings uh, there's better stuff lightweight nano oil sometimes the um the, uh, uh, what do they call it? The REM oil that Microtech uses in their factory that's Teflon based, that's really good stuff. A drier lubricant sometimes can be better, but it's, you know, just choose what you like. I like Break Free CLP and I like REM oil. That's kind of what I've used. Um, that's what I'm gonna recommend, you know? Really, really like this stuff. Now, like I said, guys, there's a lot of additional items that could have been added to this list. There's a lot of stuff that I don't know about, but the idea here was to create a sort of EDC starter pack for those people who are new to this world and trying to sort of trying to fill it out. And I think all of these items give a good example without breaking the bank. Don't feel obligated to purchase every single one, but surely there's an item in here uh, for most people, you know, at least one item that they can use themselves or recommend to another person, uh, family member, something like that. So I hope this video was useful and helpful. I hope it was entertaining. I hope that you guys got something out of it. I've been excited to do this for a while and I am I am really enjoying carrying a lot of this stuff um, and, I, and I use it on a, on a daily basis. So anyways, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video or found it entertaining, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives and EDC gear that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do not like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, Go ahead and click on this Middle Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.